It's two forty six. What? It's two forty six. That's what time it is, okay? And you're in your dressing gown. Yes. Yes, I remember when we met on the on Pride and Buffer Beach. Oh yes, 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 yes. You and Jörg were sat down, no? No, it wasn't with Jörg, it was with... Was he not? Was he not with Jörg? No! No, it was with that English guy, um... Oh, um... Dave. Oh, no. Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave Reynolds. Yeah, I wonder what happened to him, actually. I first landed in Ibiza in 2011? No, 2012. It was a passage, a one-off, a me-me on my list while I traveled around Europe. Somehow I met a guy while getting money at the ATM machine on the Playa de Mbosa Strip. It was in front of CC's slash New Garden. And for those who don't know, CC used to be the location of Romy Schneider's villa. She's um, the lead actress in the movie CC, impersonating the famous um, anorexic press Elizabeth. She's, she was the aunt of Franz Ferdinand, whose uh, assassination started World War I. Um, if you like reading about messed up monarchs, you should definitely Google her name. The Crown is nothing. That's, that's the Netflix movie they should make about. Anyways, just to say that her villa used to be a drug fuel haven. Everybody used to go there to partake in heroin she always used to look or seem so innocent but she was not anyways i digress but uh yeah so instead of being true to myself uh no true to myself instead of being suspicious i engaged in a conversation with this guy and we ended up that night on his rooftop and we kissed and that kiss was a catalyst because it made me come back the year after and what was supposed to be a month of Spanish lessons became five years and one of my first friend was Lovana and the first one to support me with this project we met on the beach at a place called Fives very popular for their full English breakfast and since then three owner owners have purchased that beach restaurant the new ones just purchased it two weeks before the lockdown in March. Oh, these poor souls. Anyways, the way it happened, I remember it clearly. I was sitting there with this other guy, and uh, we were just engaging in a conversation, looking at facing the beach, and this beautiful black girl with very, very short hairstyle and very light brown contact is walking past us and she has her tracksuit on which leads me to think that oh she just came back from a run or something like that and we both look at each other and we say hello and we were convinced that we know each other it's like hey how are you were you there were you there and i'm like no 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 so anyways we realize we don't know each other but we ended up exchanging numbers and she just arrived and she doesn't really know anybody except her boyfriend and and that's really the beginning of a friendship in what six no 2013 uh, so seven years later we're still friends <laughs> and we're both living abroad which is really funny actually but he has a girlfriend in it he's been, he's been with a girl for a long time I've not I've not heard about him for a while because there's always because at the moment there's an Ibiza cook down thing on on online and there's another day Reynolds and every time I see it I keep on thinking it's him and it's not um I don't know where he is Dave Reynolds was well is a retired detective maybe he worked for MI6 no 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 he was a a detective I can't remember how I met him it will come back to me I'm sure hmm in his past he was a detective on Ibiza he was a driver to the stars. I just thought about it. All English people usually say on Ibiza. I don't say that. I say in Ibiza, which is weird, I find. But anyways. Um, so yes, he was a driver to the stars and wealthy. He used to tell me s- 
some very disturbing tales about CEOs and their partying ways. And yes, you know all of them. So, yeah, so you, we met there. And what was going on in your life at back then? Do you remember? Oh my gosh, you're even going to dig into that? Well, we have to start with a premise. I don't know. Uh, at that time, I was ready to split from an eight and a half year relationship. Doing a podcast is a process. It's tapping into things that I hate, like editing and sound checks. I didn't know that doing a podcast in your car would be such an awful uh, experience when it comes to sound. So if you hear a lot of keys or outside noise, and I think at one point I'm even talking to my niece, well, you know, I just thought it would be a very, I thought it would be a fun creative process, but it's really not. It's annoying to the ears and I'm sorry. And on this adventure of self-discovery, I asked Lovana why she decided to come to Ibiza. But it's because, what, the beaches were nice? You hated the London weather? Because the London weather was rubbish. Um, I think that's probably the main reason, really, the weather. Okay. So you didn't come here to establish a business then? I wasn't thinking like that at that time. My partner was thinking that, but I wasn't thinking about that on my side. Ah, oh, see, I thought that's what you came for. I, see, I, I'm trying no. to remember now. Okay, that's not why you came to be. So you just wanted to have a good life I, with yeah. good weather. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. But didn't he start a business? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he had a hot dog stand. <laughs> oh, yes. Biden Bossa. Um, that was his his thing, but that was not my thing. Ah, oh, that was not your thing. Okay. No. Okay, you started working for Sankey straight away then. I started to work for Sankey's, yeah, pretty much straight away. Mm. You know, I had never heard of that club before. I had... <laughs> how, how long was you in Ibiza when I met you? That's what I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember if I met you my first year or the ow, second ow. year. That's her new kitten scratching her. I met you my first year in Ibiza, right? What year did you move to Ibiza? 2012? So then it's a, it was the second year I met you. See, there you go. Okay. It was 2013. Okay, yeah, because I think, yeah, yeah, I think I met... Worst, worst year of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it the worst year of your life? <laughs> it was the worst and best year of my life. That's a lie. It was the worst year of my life because I split up with my partner and it was a bit, it was hard. It was really, it was really difficult. Uh, but it was the best year of my life because I found my wings and I had a bloody good summer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you break up mid-summer with her? Yes! Yeah, okay. Like, okay. Well, I don't know if it was June or was it July. I can't even remember. I think it, maybe it was June. <laughs> yes, I, I think we arrived, I think we arrived in April. April, okay. May, June, and I think we were here for two months together, and then uh, June, June or July, beginning of June or July, yeah. is when it all went down, and I got thrown out, basically, of my house. That was the summer of breakups. They say that if you come to Ibiza, you might fortify your relationship, or you're definitely going to break up and date someone else. And that summer, I had met another girl. Oh, yeah, she was also a first friend from Kuwait. That's how I met Dave. I met him uh, in at school because me, well him, me, and that girl, we used to always go out for lunch. Yes, that's how we met. Yes. Okay, now I remember. Yes, 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 yes. So that girl was married to an Argentinian who was cheating on her left and right and she wanted to have kids with him and she found out he was cheating on her. So that summer, it was exit plan summer. So we had to find an exit plan. And anyway, she just got all her things shipped to a friend. And unfortunately, it's a really good story. But I cannot tell you what happens. <sighs> Let's get back to Lovana. 
I remember being with Sylvie and then going to that Cala Salada or whatever it was. Yeah. 10,000 miles away. And there's no reception there on the phone. Oh, yes. That's true. Can't get the phone. the worst beat when I'm like, my life, I don't know how I'm going to live. <laughs> I just remember going, Sylvia, there's no reception here. How can I find out if I've got somewhere to live or not? Like... <laughs> I bought the place that she could have brought you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. I was like, just relax, just enjoy the day. And then after she was at your phone, I was just like, oh, my God, bricking it. I was totally bricking it. Yeah. And then miraculously, I can't remember who sent me the contact. Cala Salada is one of the most beautiful beach I've ever been to. You have to uh, go down a cliff to arrive to that beach. There's not that much shade. It's very tiny. But the water is crystal clear and you even have these little fishes that come and, well, depending on how you feel about it, come and give you kisses or come and eat your dead skin. But it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous and used to be one of the best kept secrets of Ibiza until an American tourist sat next to me. Now it's all overpopulated, it's full of garbage uh, it's, it's really too bad because it was a great beach, but the biggest problem that everybody has ever had is that there's no cell reception. So if there's an emergency, if you're, you know, doing what I was doing, I was um, renting apartments and villas. If you know you have bookings coming or people with problems, it's not the best place to go because they'll never be able to reach you. Let's get back to Lovana now. Somebody was like, oh, there's a place um, in Figueretas as well, like in that area. <laughs> Do you want me to put you in touch with the guy? Then I spoke with the guy and then he was like, yeah, come around, have a look at the place. Went around there and it was just perfect. And it was two minutes from my old place. Yes. <laughs> that was really mean of him when I think about it, but I kind of remember why it happened. What, to throw me out? Yes. He was raging. Mm. Oh, yeah, he was. And I don't blame him. I've apologized <laughs> since. I've apologized to him, everything. Um, I do not blame him, but. <laughs> it was so much drama, but so much fun, so much spontaneous, mad moments um, in one, crammed in one year. It was crazy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've, I've apologized to him since everything. Um, that was a bad period, mate. Yeah, I remember I was thinking, oh, that girl's playing with fire, but I don't think she's here. If you were wondering what happened, well, she just decided she wanted a relationship with someone else. Anyway. Yes, anyways, let's go to fun times. That summer of chaos and mayhem. Yeah. That summer when we found 99 cents wine and we loved it. <laughs> I don't even remember. Did we have hangovers those days? My gosh. I don't remember. I really don't think there was any time for any hangovers. There was no time for a hangover. I don't know because you were a chemist. You were like mixing things like oh, okay and with a bit I was of like. A chemist? You're a freaking chemist. Like, no, no. That's how, not how you do it. Bubbles and lines. Bubbles and lines. I remember that. And then... Uh, you... what? Bubbles and lines? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were all about bubbles and lines. And you were, like, always mixing things. Like, you know, no, no. You take a little bit of cocaine. And then you mix it with cake. So I guess, <laughs> Girl, she's a chemist. Like, no, 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 you gotta do it like that. <laughs> no, we took too much. Now we need to go on that. Okay, now we're too damn, you know. <laughs> you were like that. Oh my god, I was crazy. You were a what? chemist. <laughs> you were a chemist. It was funny. I was like, Wait, what's I getting all that from? I don't know. You were in a light life, the VIP. You were meeting all these people who were giving you money and. As an observer, this was really funny to me. Ah, the past. Ibiza past. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. We had the stamina of first and second year arrivals. 
Ibiza is like Groundhog Day. At first, wake up, beach, rinse, work, party. If you're lucky, you get a siesta in between. Every day there is a different party, and when you're new, you go to all of them. I even went to Paris Hilton's night, but only because it was free. It was a joke. I cannot believe that someone would consciously let people pay an entrance fee to watch them fake play music without even attempting to hide it. That's different levels of sociopath behavior. Anyways, if you had visited me by year three, I was already over it. I couldn't be bothered to go to the beach that was 50 meters away from where I lived, which was Playa and Bosa. I only went to event if I didn't have to pay, or if it was a VIP area, or if it was a day on a yacht. Oh, and that brings me to the why of this podcast. I traveled a lot and met some extraordinary people that are more interesting than anyone of pa- on page six. During our confinement, I wanted to know how they were doing. I have no idea, Ingrid, what's going to happen. Well, can you explain to anybody who doesn't know what happened in, in, in Spain, well, in Ibiza, well, during the lockdown, what happened to you guys? Did you sense that it was coming? Or was it just like from one day no. to another? No. Do you know what happened? Yeah. So, um, we were at home and a friend of ours came over because Jose wanted to go to Thailand, didn't he? In oh, yeah. So we were at home and a friend of ours came over with her little girl and Jose was like, yeah, I want to go to Thailand. She was like, you can't go to Thailand, there's a virus. He was like, what virus? She's like, yeah, 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 there's a virus. Check it, check it before you book anything. Check it. And at that time, there was no, like, Nobody was even thinking, like, anything was going to happen. Then about a week or something later, big virus, virus, this on the news and everything in China. And stuff, and I was like, great. Just happened all really quickly. Wow, really? It happened all super, super quickly here. Super, super quickly from the China thing and everybody thinking, oh, it's just in China, just in China, to me just going to work every day. And then I remember I was at Melanie's house on the Friday, the Friday the twelfth or something, the day before the official lockdown. And then Jose was like, "You shouldn't even be there because the, hot, the lockdown started." And I was like, "Oh, I don't care. But, well, we've like, um, what do you say? We've exposed each other now. Us lot, me, Alba, her kids. Yeah. I said it's not going to really make any difference now. That just means I can just keep on coming here." <laughs> <laughs> Even at her house getting like drunk and then from the next day it was just like lockdown did you try to go outside no we only went out in left in where we live in the front we didn't go out anywhere yeah so you're locked down basically actually, actually the day after i've made a run for my office and got all my stock and my computer that's actually so smart. I went to the office. I went to the office, and good thing I did because I know everybody was like it's completely locked down. So the, day, the morning after, I went to my office, got as much stuff as I could, and put it in the back of my car. Okay. Ah, really? That's actually smart. Really, really. Your lockdown, just for people who don't know, because we're in Canada and yours was really extreme. Your lockdown is such that you couldn't go outside uh, unless you had a dog. You could go uh, walk your dog or you could just go in front of your house for a few minutes and then go back inside, right? No, you couldn't go out in front of your house. You could only go to the supermarket, the pharmacy, um, or walk your dog. That was it. 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 I've been stuck in confinement. I'm trapped in Canada. If you can believe it, I'm trapped in my own country. I was actually on my way back to China, but um, unfortunately now the country's closed and I didn't think it was a really smart thing to go back there when nobody knew what the situation was.
That was it. And what if you weren't going, like, let's say you were going to the grocery store, and mm -hmm. would you, like, get stopped by the police? To, it, would be, uh... it depends. I mean, the police were, like, on the main highways. Oh. You could work your way around them, but they, they, they were on the main highways. I remember I went to Ibiza Town Post Office instead of San Jordi. Okay. And then while I was there, I went to my office. Uh, and then I said, I'm going to go to the health food shop in town. And then on my way back near Beefit, up, up that bit, yeah. the police stopped me. But I went to Eroski quickly and bought some bread and, and ham and stuff for Albert. It was on my car seat. So the police stopped me. He said, where do you live? And I said, St. Jordi. He goes, where have you been? He didn't even let me answer. He saw the food on the, on the chair and went, okay, shopping. And then let me go. Oh, really? Yeah, but I don't think it's not strict like that anymore. Okay. And now I've worked my way my way round it. I just drive on the back streets to come back. Well, I told the neighbour off here. Oh really? Why? Yeah, because he's got a girlfriend and I kept on seeing her car outside. Okay. And um I could hear them having sex at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my God. She came round. So I said to Jose, look, I'm going to leave a note on her car. And he was like, no, yeah, good, I can't do that. And then I just waited for her to leave and I went up to her in the car park going, you can't be here. And she was like, what? What do you mean I can't be here? And I was like, okay, you do not live here and we're on quarantine. You can't be here. She's like, oh, okay, okay, sorry. And then the neighbor came out looking for me. Afterwards going, why did you have, why did you speak to her? Have you got anything to say? You should come and speak to me. And I was like, you've got no Jose. It's like, Jose always argues with me anyway. I'm the one that's normally saying, Jose, give it a break. So Jose was in the other room listening to me so that I didn't even let the guy speak. I was like, you've got no grounds to stand on hitting quarantine. She cannot be here. And I do not want my daughter at 12 o'clock in the afternoon hearing you guys having sex. And he was going to me. He was going to me, ah, oh, yeah, but you have a family here. I need love. I need to touch. Da, 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 da. And I said, give me a break. I said, don't give, I said, give me a break. I said, my mum's in London on her own. What do you mean you need love? You need I said, I think you can't be here. off at you but i understand yeah, then afterwards he, he messaged jose's jose's phone saying tell your wife i said sorry at the end of the recording it was end of april so she was still at the beginning of phase zero so what else like now you're on in phase uh, zero you just reopened zero. right yeah so now what what does that mean and Jose can go outside together now because before it was only one parent. Oh, really? You couldn't even go yeah. as a family? Wow. No. Oh, I didn't know that. One parent. Oh, wow. Okay. Really stupid. Um, I can't remember what phases mean. Everything's got so much rules. I've got it all on this thing written down somewhere. Um, I think they're saying that all restaurants can open now for takeaway, something like this. Uh, they were closed during quarantine. You can even take yeah. do have takeaway. No, okay. Okay. Just pharmacies and groceries were open basically. Yeah. Um I don't even know what's happening in the phases. I think they said small small businesses can open from the eleventh or something. Mm-hmm. But can you send me those phases? Because I'm curious. Because you did say that hotels were gonna be able to open also. Not now. Not now. But later. And that the season later. And that the season would open around the end of July, right? What season? The season depends. The season depends on the planes. I watched. I watched a news report today. CNN was in Formentera. 
Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, CNN was reporting from Formentera asking the residents of Formentera, because they're in phase one already before us. Right. So asking the residents of Formentera, can Formentera survive without tourists? And Formentera said, no. So we're going through all of these phases, but there's no tourists. Or even to go to Formentera, so everybody who was coming off the boat and stuff had to get tested. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Do you guys have a lot of testing kits, or how are you guys equipped? Do you know? There is no testing kits here, only for the vulnerable and only for, like, the people in the front line. Oh. I think, like, I think England, there's testing kits. I've been seeing my friends putting up stuff that have been tested. Really? So you yeah. don't even know if you, you, you have it. Like, nobody's able to test you. No. Wow. Have there have been, have there been any cases in, in Ibiza or no? Yeah, in Ibiza there's about 150-something cases, something like that, and seven deaths or I can't even keep up with it. Really? That's not a lot, but it's kind of a lot for a small island. I'm surprised. You want a tip? I got a tip for you. Who doesn't like a good travel tip? Best time to come and travel in Ibiza is during um, May, April, well, maybe April, May. The season starts in April with, you know, the beach clubs and restaurants reopening and they're doing their uh, opening events, which is fun. It's still mostly locals that are there. And then after that, the clubs usually open in May and they have also their events, their opening parties. And then the season progresses, and there's more and more and more tourists that arrive. By July, you're tired. It's overcrowded. It's boiling hot. There's just traffic everywhere. You can't stand this plane. You want to get out. But the tourists are super happy. They don't understand why you don't want to party. And it's just, for me, July, August, it's just a hateful place. And then September, October, ah, there's less people. All the students are gone. It's mostly adults and uh, everybody is in a good mood because it's less stressful and there's all the closing parties which again it's mostly local people and it's a good time so if you want to travel to Ibiza I would say come in April May or September October especially the end of September it's really great do not come in mid-October and expect clubs to be open they will not be open well I used to see travelers in October, no, in December, January, expecting things to be happening, or even February. They thought the clubs were open, you could party. Oh, Ibiza is so much cheaper at this time. No, there's nothing open. There's no one there. There's nothing for you. Please don't do that. For this episode of Neurotic Crowd. If you liked us, give us a rating of five stars so other people can find us. See you next week for part two. Neurotic